Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a box plot. It's also called a box and whiskers plot. It was created by a statistician named John Tukey. And it's a way to visually view a dispersion of data. Uh, you can have a low, a low point and you have these quartiles. The, the first 25%, uh, second 25%, third 25%, and the last 25%. And it lets you kind of see that data in a visual, asp in a visual form. Now, if we wanted to just create a simple box plot with data here, I have these uh, group one scores, and they're arranged from ascending order, from lowest to greatest. All I need to do is just select this range of data. I'm doing it because I have other data here. I don't want to select all this other one, but I'm going to start with this one first and go under insert and under the uh, statistics chart, go under box and whiskers. Now, incidentally, the box plot was something that was introduced here. This particular chart was introduced in Excel 2016. So if you have Excel 2013 or previous, this was not available. But I'll have another video later on that shows how to create a uh, box whisker chart in previous versions. Now, all we need to do is just click this, and you see that we have our chart here. And it's actually really easy to create when you think about it. Let me spread it out a little bit here. And if that's all we wanted to do is just kind of create this chart, there you have it. But it's probably a good idea to kind of understand how to read this chart. So when we initially create this chart, it doesn't really have a lot of labels that kind of lend itself to easy reading. So we'd have to interpret this chart a little bit more. Now, what I can do is I can click on the chart and go add labels. And it will give me the data labels for this chart. So what we need to do now is kind of understand how to read this chart. So when we talk about this chart in general, remember we were we were talking about the quartiles. We have our first quartile, which is this bottom part here to this end of the first box. This is the first 25%. From here to here, that's the second 25%. This little sliver here is the third 25%, so basically 75%. And from here to the top of this portion, the whisker of the top here, it's the last 25%. So you can see it's in quarters. We have our first, we have our first quarter here, the second quarter here, this sliver of the third quarter, and our fourth quarter there. And you'll notice that the label tells us the identifiers here. So this whisker portion here, this is the lowest point or the minimum point of our value outside of outliers. You can see 150 is an outlier here and I'll cover that a little bit later on how that's determined. The 677 here that is the uh, first part of the quarter that the bottom part here right so 677 represents our Q1 where it starts and 978 represents our median. This is the 50 percent how when you think about it right Just, it's the middle value. Now when we get to this 1002 that represents our third quartile, our Q3 or quartile number three, and then this 1200 value here, this is the maximum value of our data here out, that is not an outlier. Now if I wanted to see the other points here, what I can do is I can right click and go under format data series, and it's going to come up with my data series here. So by default, it will show the outlier points, show the mean marker, which is this, this is the mean value 805, and also by default, the way that it calculates the quartiles is uh, exclusive median, which means that it takes the median into account when it's calculating the quartiles, Q1 and Q3. So let's see how that actually works when we're calculating it out. So you can get, kind of get a better understanding of how Excel charts this. So our median here, we can go equals median. We'll use this formula to figure out our median. And our median, we just select our, all the values here, press enter that's going to give us our 978, which is that value there. This is the middle number between all these values. You can see here, it's right in the middle. We have uh, f five values up there, and we have five values uh, down there. So the middle value is right there at 978. Now, Q1, that's our quarter. That's our first quarter, the first 25%. And the way it figures this out, and I'm going to get back to the way that uh, Excel does it, it's going to ex exclude the median, right? So if I click here, as you recall, we have this quartile calculation. It, by default, it does exclusive median. So what that really means is that I'm going to, to I'm going to take the middle point here of these values, and I won't include the median as part of the calculation, 
right? So if I did that, I would do the median here equals median. And I'm just going to take these values here, press enter, and you see 6, 7, seven, seven is my Q1 value, which is down here, right? And so my Q3 value is going to be the upper portion of it, and that's not going to include the median. So I can just type equal median and take these values here, press enter, and you'll see that's 1002, which corresponds to the chart here, 1002. Now, the outlier is determined by the interquartile range. Now, basically, this is just Q3 minus Q1. So it's the value between the difference of 1002 and 677. So all I need to do is equals 1002 Q3 minus Q1. And then I have my 325. The reason why we need this is this helps us calculate any outliers. So this is, you can see 150 is an outlier here. And basically an outlier is something that's kind of outside of the data. It's, it's really kind of an aberration of the data when you really think, when you think about it. To calculate an outlier, that's going to be 1.5 times greater than the quartile ranges. So for the Q1 outlier, anything that is 1.5 times greater than 677 is going to be considered an outlier. So to determine that is I take equal and I need to have my Q1 minus my outlier, which 1.5 times the IQR. All right. So that's going to be give me 189. So anything that is below 189 0.5 is considered an outlier. So we do the, the same for the Q3 outlier, but this time we're adding to it. So this is going to be equal to Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR, right? And that's going to give us 1489. So anything above 1489.5 is an outlier, right? So we can see that 150 is an outlier here. So these other calculators here, I can use to see how it corresponds to my chart here. So average, I, that's going to be AVERG, average of the, this amount. Press enter, you can see 805.3636, that's that value there. The minimum is going to be that's this 199 or this 150 value, which is an outlier. So that's going to give us, we're going to use the formula or the function called min, and we're going to select these values here. That's going to give 150 as our minimum and max. We type, type in max and select the same range here. Press enter. That's going to give our max here. And the reason why, of course, I had mentioned before why this 150 doesn't correspond to the, the tail here is the tail looks at the minimum value that is not an outlier, right? So as I mentioned before, an outlier is anything that's greater than 189.5, one, or in this case, Q1 less than 189.5. 150 is less than it. So it's going to hop up to the next number that is not uh, outside of the outlier range. And it's 199. So that's why the tail here, or the whisker when you think about it, is 199. That's how it gets calculated. So if we didn't use the exclusive and we use it inclusive, you, you'll notice that now the box plot changes. It gets smaller. When we include the median as part of our calculation, you'll notice that the box does get smaller and the interquartile range gets smaller too. So when you're charting these things out and if someone's asking you if it's inclusive of the median or exclusive of the median, you'll, you'll be able to explain it. So let's see how this looks like in when we calculate it out. So the median is still going to be the same. I'm just going to do median here and I'm going to select these values, right? It's going to be the same. You notice that it's the same here, 978. Now quarter one is going to be different now because we're including the median. So if I'm including the median, I'm going to type median and I'm going to select for Q1, I'm going to include the median too, this 978 value as part of the calculation. So when I include that, you have 718.5, which is our value here. And the same thing for Q3. If I do median and I include the median as part of the calculation here, I'm including that median here, that 978. And now I have my 999.5, which is up there. So my IQR changes too, right? So we have a smaller range here. That Q3 minus Q1, which is 281. That's the value here. And of course, my outliers change. You can note, of course, you notice it visually now that since my outlier has changed, I have two points that are outside of this box and whiskers. So the Q1 outlier is going to be this particular value plus, 
oops, minus 1.5 times the IQR, the interquartile range. All right, that's going to give us 297. So anything that is less than 297 is considered an outlier. You can see we have two values, of course, that are less than 297. My Q3 outlier, I'm going to type equal the Q3 plus 1.5 times the IQR here. All right? That's going to be 1421. So anything outside of 1421 is considered an outlier. We don't have any outliers in the top there. So there's kind of the summary for at least one value, one set of data. And we can understand the difference between uh, the median that is exclusive in terms of mar how Microsoft does it by default and if we had to go and do an inclusive one. As you can see, Excel gives you many different ways to do things. Now, if we wanted to compare data, let's say we, we just didn't have one data, but we wanted to compare data and we had two sets of data to compare. And what we're doing is we're looking at data and we're going to see how the means compare, how, how the medians compare. This gives us a nice way to do that because now instead of having a bunch of lines of mean, median, Q1, Q2, it's all done within a box plot, all self-contained in the box plot. So I have another set of data here that it's also listed ascending and I can put it here. Let me do group two. So what I can do here is I can select my chart and you can see that I have these lines that are here and what it's doing is it's indicating which values, which cell values are being corresponded or taken into the chart. All I can do now is I can just kind of hover or take this particular portion of this box and kind of move it over here and it's going to include that set of data now in this chart. And you can see it's erased a couple of things, but it's also added a couple other things. You can see it's added some other dots which indicate the other points that are in here. What I can do now is just right click, go to Format Data Series, and maybe I don't want to show the inner points. These are all the points that are part of the data here. I want to take that out and I just want to show the, uh, yeah, I guess it's probably okay to show the inner points. And, and you can see here it's chosen exclusive. Let me go back here and see if it's still on the exclusive. Yep. So what we can do is we can kind of verify here this data, this area, this data here too. Let me pull this over. Let me pull this data over. Let's see. Maybe I can just kind of select this data and pull it over and hopefully it'll copy it correctly. Median C2, right? That's that got done. Uh, let's see Q1. Let's let's show the data here. So I can let me close this. So I can verify that. So let me put the data labels here. All right. So I've got a lot of data. It looks kind of convoluted, a little messy. Let me spread it out and see if we can see it. And the reason why it's messy is because I have my other data points here. So I'm going to right click that, click on Format Data Series, and get rid of the inner points. I just want the uh, other points and do the same thing for this one. Get rid of the inner points there, make it a little bit messy. Right. So we can just verify this right now. Right. So I have my 860, which is my median, which is that one right there. 739, which is my first quartile. 1007, my second, my third quartile. 268 is going to be the difference between those. My outlier is 337. So anything below 337, which we don't have anything below 337, is an outlier. And the outlier for Q3, anything above 1409, which we don't, is a considered a outlier. So that's all set there. So we don't have any outliers in our second set of data here. So I can also move this over here. Let me select that and move this over. And we have our averages. So average here is 879. We have our minimum was 421, which is down there. We have our maximum 1306, which is over there. Now let me move this data over. Let me copy that data. What it's going to do is just copy the formulas over and adjust it corresponding. We have our C2 instead of our, our B2. Now, if I change this to inclusive, it should also change, of course, the uh, calculations, right? So if I click inclusive median, you can see it's gotten smaller. Let me close this. And our data has changed, right? Or our, our data for the IQR and the outliers have changed, right? And plus Q1, Q3. So we have 760, 955, uh, 195 is the difference. And then we have our outliers here. So in this respect, it gives us a, a kind of a neat way to compare two series of data. Uh, in, in this situation, let's say that we had our group one and group two scores, and we were looking to see uh, if a test prep helped them or not. And maybe I can just kind of create some dummy data here to see if a test prep helped the, in this situation. What I can do first is let me kind of take away all these labels because they kind of make it a little bit messy here. I'm going to... Uh, 
oops, let me go make sure that these are both median or exclusive and median. All right? Yep, and they are. And I'm going to remove the labels. Let's just remove the labels for now. All right? And I will have my box plot here. I'm going to see if a test prep have, have, has helped. So I'm going to type equals, and I'm just going to create some random number generator, ran between one and two. And it's either going to be a one or two. Right? And, or maybe just, uh, yeah, one and two. So if, I'll put it into an if statement. If this number uh, equals to one, then say a test prep, right? And if it's not equal to one, say no test prep, right? Press control enter. Oops, let me bring it down, double click to bring that formula down. And I'm just gonna do control C and then control Alt E S V. I just wanna paste the values. So I'm gonna use a paste special, Alt E S V. Uh, v is underlined here. Click OK. And it's going to have this particular set of data. So what this does is it's going to populate my uh, values down here now. And I can include that as part of my uh, chart. So this is here. So let me go under design, go select data. And I want my horizontal category to be uh, this data. I didn't need to include the header there, so I can just let me delete that and just include this part. Press enter, press OK. Whoops, I forgot to include it for the other series of data. Let me go back into click my chart here, go under design, select data, under group two scores, also have that uh, label. All right, click here, click OK, click OK. And now we'll notice that you know for the, some of the students in this, maybe these are students, uh, we have no test prep and test prep. You can see if we had to compare data, uh, let me take out this line here. This is the right click, go to format data series. This is the show mean line. So it basically just shows you the, 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 the comparison there. So now we even uh, narrow down the data a little bit more. We have our group one scores, we have our group two scores, and we kind of even narrowed it down to some other weather so the other criteria, whether or not they prepared for a test or didn't prepare for a test. And you see, once we did that, we had an outlier here for the test prep. So anybody that was a test prep in this particular set of situations, there was an outlier here, which was that 1235 score, right? This was the outlier here because this had a test prep. So as you can see, as we get into it a little bit more, there's a lot more that could be added to it. And of course, it becomes a little bit more challenging, challenging to read. But at this point, you kind of you have to guide your audience to it. Now, if we wanted just to create a box plot to compare things uh, at the beginning of the video, that would probably be as far as you would go, just creating the one series box plot or just doing comparison with a couple other series instead of having it uh, broken down into some other variable or some other attribute. But that basically is your box plot and how you can create it in Excel 2016. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.